velocity acceleration in terms of response spectrum in four way logarithmic uh, graphs uh, and how to do it. And then we, we can uh, match uh, to the elastic design spectra in Eurocode. And then uh, I will explain how to understand the key factor in the design spectra, uh, the relation between key factor and ductility classes, and also how to calculate key factor. I hope uh, we have enough time in two hours. So I'll try my best to deliver these uh, topics. Okay, this is my objective. So how could the shape be like this? I mean, this kind of shape, yeah, this spectra. So that's one of my objective. The other is why we need the key factor. Key factor is behavior factor in Eurocode 8. So by knowing this, I hope all the participants in this uh, morning can evaluate the current design spectra if you have enough data, of course, and develop the new design spectra for Malaysia and, and also developing site-specific design spectra, I hope. Okay, this is my, my main reference as used to uh, develop these uh, presentations. Uh, two from Professor Trifunek from Southern California University. Uh, I think this is the one is the famous one, Professor Chopra from University of California, Berkeley. And also this one is uh, uh, professional practices, uh, a well-known, yeah? uh, Rafael Sabelli from AISC. Okay, let's start with the first subtopic, introduction. So we have to know initially what the meaning of spectrum. Spectrum initially, uh, proposed by Professor Joseph Owe from Francis, from France, yeah. So uh, he, he proposed that in, in order to understand the content of the wave, we have to uh, transform the waveform into cosine and sine wave. So he proposed Fourier transform, and then later it, 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 it is uh, uh, enhanced by various researcher with uh, very fast uh, transform uh, different methods uh, of of course uh, in in a fast way so uh, thanks to joseph Fore because with his tools we can understand uh, the content of the waveform after that uh, professor Maris biot in his thesis in California Institute of Technology in the US, he proposed that uh, to understand uh, uh, the effect of uh, ground motion in any systems, we have to changing the, uh, the content uh, presentation in a different way. So if we have a ground motion in time series, so uh, we have to change it to uh, frequency content uh, or uh, period series. So a similar idea with uh, uh, Joseph Ode. But the uh, novelty is uh, given by Professor Maurice this. It is, uh, we can uh, add the masses and stiffness of the system to the uh, calculation. So uh, we can get the response of the single degree of freedom, let's say, or multi-degree of freedom. So uh, it is proposed in 1932 uh, in Caltech. So he said that response spectrum is the ma maximum amplitude plot of damped system. So. What's the difference with the spectrum? Spectrum uh, is pure of the wave. So we change the sine and cosines, we transform in frequency. So we will get uh, the idea of the content with the Bayard spectrum. So we, we, we can uh, define the damping and also the masses and the stiffness. Okay, this is the early progress of response spectrum. Uh, 
I mean in earthquake engineering, this one, Maurice Biot, <coughs> Biot. And, and then uh, the concept uh, enhanced by Professor Hausner, uh, he got some data from soil, ground motion, so he uh, changed his ground motion uh, to the spectrum that proposed by Maurice. And then I believe uh, this one of the famous graph that containing uh, the spectrum of ground motion in various soil type. And then the spectrum is then extended to three-parted way. Uh, this is conducted by uh, Professor Feletsos and Neumark in 65 to investigate the shape of response spectra using the peak acceleration velocity and displacement. Mm, oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. <clears throat> Mainly we will discuss uh, the graph is based on uh, Felestos and Newmark idea. Okay, now, uh, in terms of earthquake engineering, we have four, four types of uh, response spectrum. It's, the first one is response spectrum acceleration uh, based on the ground motion acceleration. Uh, commonly, it is known by pseudo acceleration because it is developed based on the uh, displacement uh, response times history. The second one, is site-specific elastic design spectrum, which is uh, developed based on the deterministic seismic hazard analysis. The third one is elastic design spectrum. Uh, recently, it is uh, developed based probabilistic seismic hazard uh, uh, analysis, but previously it is uh, done by uh, also using deterministic uh, seismic hazard analysis. In some countries, uh, they use uh, both method, deterministic and probabilistic seismic hazard analysis to uh, develop the design spectrum. Uh, for example, US and then also in uh, Indonesia. Uh, the fourth one is in elastic uh, response spectrums. Uh, this for designs, it is uh, I can say this number three, in combining with the Q factor, we have the inelastic design uh, spectrum. This is a, uh, an example, the graph of the uh, response spectrum of air acceleration. And this one is a site specific, uh, no, this one is also response spectrum of acceleration. This is from Hosner actually, uh, and then presented again by Sid and et al. in 76, yeah, but is all already smoothed, yeah, and is normalized by its PGA, that's why it started from one. And this one is the inelastic distance response spectrum, uh, okay, for various soil type. Okay, let's start with the, the first type of the response spectrum. So the response spectrum of acceleration uh, that uh, calculated from the earthquake record is developed using a ground motion acceleration record based on the response of uh, SDR system with damping, of course, for various periods. So it means that the ground motion, we change in the uh, frequency uh, with the fixed, uh, uh, masses and stiffness, of course, and uh, we will get the spectrum. Uh, spectrum, in the simple meanings, is uh, a compilation of maximum amplitude, uh, no, maximum absolute amplitude of a data series. So, we have, uh, if we have any data series, we, we can change it to the uh, spectrum. So normally uh, the spectrum is uh, under frequency. So this is the, the, 
the, the an example the the source uh, from earthquake record yeah, and this, uh, this is the response spectrum uh, the, the other one is tight specific elastic design spectrum uh, so since the name is site specific so we have to collect all data on the site and then <clears throat> we transform the ground motion or the ground motion into the spectrum way and then we uh, averaging using uh, median and then uh, also median plus one standard deviation to capture the uh, highest possible in the future quick and then uh, we can smooth the line yeah you, you see the FEMA method or uh, any method that available to smooth this curve. This one is median. The highest one is median plus uh, standard deviation and uh, minimize the median um, minus uh, one standard deviation. The third one is elastic design spectrum. This one, as I mentioned pre previously, is uh, based on probabilistic method. Uh, also in Malaysian code that uh, uh, using the Euro code, especially in defining the peak ground acceleration, it is based on probabilistic method. Probabilistic method produce the spectra, so-called uniform hazard spectra in short period and one second period. So, this UHS, yeah, uniform has a second, consider the seismic hazard zoning, magnitude, fault type, attendance function, and soil types. And then this uh, final spectrum is developed, but uh, considering the peak value of acceleration, very short period, and so on. And also, uh, previously, it is uh, calculated based on deterministic as uh, discussed is number two previously. So the, this is the concept of probabilistic seismic hazard analysis. So we have to uh, zoning the earthquake fault, earthquake source, and then we defining the recurrence uh, uh, trend and then attenuation that uh, suitable for the system. And then with this recurrence, we can uh, develop the uh, the graph or the probability of uh, accidents of any ground motions. Uh, let's say this kind of number of probabilities. So uh, we can define the maximum considered earthquake or design basis earthquake. Uh, 2004, 75 years earthquake, for example. So, and then based on that, we can develop any point of this spectra with this kind of. I think uh, it is uh, well explained by Dr. Sina a couple of months back in the webinar. Dr. Sina from uh, Malaysia Sabah. So, she already explained how to develop the. Uh, PGA on the bedrock based on probabilistic seismic hazard analysis. So you may refer to the record, the video record uh, uh, done by Dr. Sina. So for in elastic design response spectrum, it is based on uh, elastic design response spectrum, but reduced by the uh, force reduction factor R or in, in Eurocode, we know it as a Q factor. We will discuss this further uh, in uh, next slide. So let's enter the concept of response spectrum. So I will divide uh, this presentation in two parts. So I will explain about this uh, response spectrum. Then the next or oh, one hour, we'll explain about the Q factor. So. The concept of response vector is how to change the ground motion in time series into uh, 
the frequency or the period series. But of course, uh, this is must through the system that containing masses and stiffness. So masses and stiffness uh, representing the period of frequency. So based on that, we will get the response yeah, for various period. Yeah. So this is the response for various period and also the damping value. So this response, we select the maximum only and absolute. Yeah. And then we will plot to this graph for each period. Yeah. Let's say we will plot this. So it is containing all the absolute maximum value for the displacement response of SDOF, single degree of freedom system. So don't worry. So it looks like it's scary formula here. So, uh, but it is uh, uh, user friendly to calculate it. So uh, be patient, I will explain. So this is also the illustration graph for uh, defining the response spectrum. So this is the source of ground motion record. Then we will enter to the SDOF system that containing the masses and stiffness. With the masses and stiffness, we can calculate the period. Yeah. Let's say we start with the period 0.5 second. Then we will get the response in displacement form. Yeah, this this is the response for period 0.5 second. If we enlarge the period, we will get the response like this. So uh, the the difference can be seen clearly here. Uh, it is more tight than this. If we enlarge uh, the period then we will get uh, another response of displacement. So for each this displacement, we can collect the maxima value. Yeah. So with corris or its corresponding period, we will plot to the spectrum, this one, for 0.5 second. For one second, we will have, we have this, we plot it. For two seconds, we plot it. So we have decided the period first, normally from point, point 0.1 seconds, not the zero, because if you are using zero value for period, the numerical method will not work. Uh, properly. So this is the concept. So, so the response spectrum of displacement containing the maximum absolute value of the response of the displacement and uh, uh, in single degree of freedom uh, with a, a damping value also. Okay, how to calculate that? I mean, how to calculate the response of SDF system. So, before we enter the calculation of the ground motions, we have to know initially to calculate the response of system under random vibrations. I mean, uh, it is a kind of, let's see, uh, before we enter the ground motion, so we have to now the this this load in time series. Yeah. So this 
uh, forces is in random, yeah. So the PT is in random. So let's say like, like this. Yeah. After we understand how to calculate this, it is easy to calculate the ground motion. So, okay, let's go further. I will use the Nathan Newmark method. The actually, common numerical method is based on time stepping method because it's more easy. There are three uh, methods, interpolation of excitation function method, central difference method, and Neumark method. I believe Neumark method available in uh, all software uh, provided in uh, many universities in Malaysia, uh, like uh, SAP 2000, ATAPS, and also the STAT, STAT Pro, yeah, you name it. This one is a famous method. That's why I, I choose this one to explain in this morning. So, Newmark method uh, proposed this in 1959 based on the following expressions. Uh, this notation U with a single dot means velocity, U only without any dot in head is a displacement. And then this is the increment of the uh, uh, points. So he said that the uh, the increment of the velocity uh, following these expressions, yeah, this this uh, the parameter that the fixed parameter uh, will be given by sorry. Sorry. Okay. Okay. The method is developed based uh, for two condition system, namely linear system and non-linear system. And also for linear system, we only discuss in uh, this linear system. It has two cases, method of average acceleration and uh, linear accelerations. Both only differ by the two parameter, gamma and beta, so it's very easy. So this is the concept. Uh, average mean if we have, uh, let's say, I try to use my pen again. If we have the motion in here. and also in here. So this bold black line is the average of this point, 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 this point something like that. Yeah? So this blood line, bold line is average. So the method is average, average for each this time step, uh, t sub i, t i, t sub i plus one. So it's moving, yeah, moving up to the end of data. So this is the the concepts. U with double dot mean uh, accelerations, velocity. And this one is the velocity and displacement. For linear acceleration method, yeah, we, if we have the data, sorry, if we have data like this sample, Yeah, then we use this board line as the averaging, but in a linear way. Yeah, that's why the the methods is uh, look like similar, only only differed by the two parameters, gamma and beta. So 
it is differ by this gamma and beta for both cases average acceleration linear accelerometer and the procedure is the same so to calculate the initial conditions we have to calculate this parameter so very simple so this one is the the loading yeah, loading say we have this second zero one for example so uh, this one is the B0 and this one is the P1 and this one is B this one and so on so we can calculate this. Uh, delta T is time step. For example, this one is delta T. So we can calculate. Normally, uh, commonly, uh, the ground motion record has uh, two point uh, no point point o two point o o five seconds for time steps. Okay, for each time step, we calculate this uh, p hat. Yeah, for each time increment, then we will get this. So we can calculate it using Excel if you have uh, ability in uh, uh, scripting in the MATLAB. It's better in Mathematica, Wolfram. Also, we can create this, and then after you have this. We can repeat it. So I show you the, an example here. So we can calculate this uh, with this data. We calculate the uh, the parameter of acceleration at zero is equal to zero, and then a one, a three, k hat. And then we calculate this, and then we are using the uh, table in Excel. It's, it's better, yeah, for each time step. This, for each loading, we will get a PI hat. This is blank because we start from this value, yeah. We have to assume that the acceleration at T0 and velocity at T0 is equal to 0, so that the displacement is 0. So this column is the uh, result based on uh, analytical value, so this is exact value. So we have to check the result to this exact value. This one is the response based on uh, numerical value. So. Uh, we have to underline that numerical value is the approximation uh, uh, method. So, more you define this T, Ti, more you refine this, getting smaller, getting better, getting accurate of this result. Okay, so the accuracy, it depends on this uh, the time step. If, as I mentioned previously, that if you use the time steps with the small value, so we will get the accuracy. So the linear accelerator method only stable if uh, the time step divided by the natural period is uh, less than and equal to 0.5. So briefly uh, or in a simple manner uh, if you use the 
sorry it's more commonly we will get the the good result if the delta t with this and the delta t for the this one is let's say this is ground motion delta t and then if you calculate with the i divide this this the ground motion and then if for calculations the delta t is better smaller than this uh, smaller than this like 0 0.1 or or uh, yeah this one this one is I believe you will get the accurate value accurate result I mean okay uh, so you, you you can follow this yeah you can follow this uh, by using the uh, this procedure it is easy to calculate this one yeah and then we will get the response this this is the response yeah this is the response so it, it means that uh, let's say So as I draw previously, okay, so this P here, this one, so the uh, UI, this one. Okay. that one is UI. So the response, this one is the response. This is the random forces, yeah, random forces. So this one is the response. So we we have to compare this say with this value because this is this is the exact result if it is close enough then you have successfully to calculate that uh, function of forces then based on this table uh, we can develop our ground motion spectra so how simply change yeah simply change this factor of forces yeah, the forces replaced with the masses times the ground motions yeah This pi, yeah. Yeah. Replace this pi with this value. Okay. So, what is the masses? So, you have to replace masses with m equal to one. So that's this only entering the ground motion value. Yeah. <coughs> so with this. You decide the T 
n from 0 point up to 5 second, for example. Because m will affect the period. I hope you get what I what I meant. So once you uh, finish develop this table, you just simply entering the data file of the ground motion to this column data. Yeah. To this column, just entering the ground motion acceleration here. Yeah, this is an illustration. Pre previously, we give this uh, SDR system with the forces, but to create the response spectrum accelerations of ground motions, so we have to change the a little bit the formula with the ground motions with the constant masses equal to one. So you have and it's easy just replace the PI with the UA, yeah. So the, the, the response we will get is directly is UI. So this is ground motions. We use the new mark method. We will get this, this response for fire period. Yeah, this is also the illustrations. This is the response. Yeah, after uh, we calculate using the Neumark method, then we can plot the the displacement response spectrum is a maximum absolute value of the response displacement. Maximum, this one, we collect, and then we place it at its associated period. Yeah, this one is 0.5. And then this 5.97 is in one second, because this one second, and then this for two seconds. So all that we uh, define the period, so let's say up to five seconds, so we have plotted, yeah. Uh, this three, and this is four. Then we have plotted. Using this value, this d, we can calculate the pseudo response spectra velocity using the simply equations <coughs> for this corresponding period here, yeah, zero point five, zero point five n. We enter this. Uh, 2.67, yeah, is D, and we calculate, we will get the phi, this, 3.37. And so on, to calculate response spectrum acceleration also, simply just enter the period that we want and then the D, and just added this square to the velocity formula. So that's these equations, we will get uh, what we call pseudo, because not exactly we calculate directly from the uh, uh, numerical integration of this, because we calculate through the uh, displacement. So we call 
pseudo of velocity, pseudo of response spectrum acceleration. So now we have the response spectrum of the displacement, response spectrum of velocity, and also response spectrum of accelerations. So the next question is, we have to combine to get the uh, the information inside the spectra. So this is uh, two example of the response spectrum of accelerations. This one is uh, from seed, or uh, the spectra is normalized by its PGA here. Yeah? Uh, various soil type. You can see this and. In the right uh, graph, we have uh, various ground motion spectra in comparison with uh, uh, US code MCA spectrum. This MCE means maximum credible earthquake, or in other terminology, we call that the earthquake that has probability of accidents of 2% within 50 years of lifespan of a building. Or MCE is equal to 2,475 uh, return period earthquake. US code and uh, some countries in the world use this, uh, also Indonesia. But for Malaysia, the uh, MCE is not used. Uh, they use the DB, Design Basis Earthquake, which is 475 written period of earthquake. Okay, so this spectra is the MCE spectrum. If we select based on this MCE spectrum using the PAR uh, database, we will get this kind of ground motion. This ground motion is taken based on similar environment condition. I mean, the earthquake fault mechanism, the soil type, uh, and also the, the uh, mechanism of the earthquake, and so on. So now it is easy to collect uh, the ground motion that uh, can be similar to our environment uh, tectonic site. So this also this is a uh, consists of various ground motion from uh, the similar side, so we can average that. And uh, this one is mean response spectra. Based on this mean response spectra, then we can change it to the uh, four, four, four four way uh, combining DVA to access what is the uh, inside the spectra. This one of method uh, averaging the a set of ground motions, mean response spectra. The other method is median response spectra. So, uh, some researcher is uh, preferably using median. Uh, now I, ex I explain you with an example of mean mean plus one standard deviation, or mean equal to 50 percentile. So, if the word averaging, it is, means that these kind of conditions. Okay, let's combining the response spectrum, because to get the spectra shape, yeah, to get the spectra shape of the in your euro code yeah. to get this yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, sorry. To get this, we have to understand this uh, four-way logarithmic uh, graph first. So after you have the response spectrum here, yeah, then we can uh, at this value, this D, V, E, for each associated period, we enter in this four-way logarithmic. It is a logarithmic graph. So this one is acceleration. This one is displacement, the diagonal, 45 degree diagonal. And this is the perpendicular to horizontal axis velocity. Horizontal axis is period. So for each data period, you just, uh, yeah. Let's say this one example two, we have 7.47. And then this for acceleration, perpendicular to the its axis, perpendicular to its axis. So we can plot this graph. After you plot this graph, we will get this. So this is an example of the L Centro response spectrum. This is a famous graph and I'm taken from the Professor Chopra book. Uh, this consists of four graphs. Uh, the highest one is the spectrum with the zero damping. The lowest one is the spectrum with 10% damping. So we have this kind of zigzag uh, spectrum. Yeah. So keep in mind that these notations, U with double dot GO, sub GO, means the peak ground accelerations. This one is peak ground velocity. And this one is the peak ground displacement. Peak means this one. Yeah, this is the peak one. The peak one. The peak one. Okay. So what we will do with this kind of graph? After we have this kind of graph, we have to draw the maximum line. Yeah, we have to draw the maximum line. Let's say we want to draw this 5% damp response back to here, this one. Uh, change the... This one. So, first, we have decided which one is the maximum value spectrum velocity. So, spectrum velocity is this one. So, we have, I have to draw the perpendicular line here, perpendicular mean here. So I draw this line. So because, sorry, because this is the maximum. Yeah, this straight line, maximum line for the velocity. And this one is maximum line of the Displacement perpendicular with its axis, and this one is maximum line with the acceleration. This one, acceleration. Oh, sorry, I forgot. We have to normalize before we create this. Yeah, before we create this, we have to. Uh, 
normalize the data with its peak ground uh, value. V normalize with this, uh, this displacement normalize with this, and also the acceleration normalize with this. Then we plot it, yeah, draw the maximum line, the maximum, maximum means the maximum value of velocity, yeah, maximum value of the acceleration, velocity, maximum value of the displacement. Once you draw it, we will get this, yeah, we will get this, so this one we call TC, TD, TB, yeah, uh, and we will have this also TD here, sorry. So we can draw TD here, TE, in any seismic code, uh, maximum period is four, some, some, some code is five, up to five, that's TE. So, so I underline here, Defining sensitive region is a response spectra of acceleration, velocity, and displacement are based on crossing point of maximum value length in normal response spectra. But for TB is quite subjective, so also uh, in Eurocode, but it is commonly taken between this value. The minimum is 0 0.125, maximum is uh, 0.2. Uh, US uh, using this, yeah, uh, for Malaysia is various, it depend on soil type. But for TC and TD, we will vary with damping. The Eurocode provide this value, yeah, TB, TC, and TD. Okay, so once we get this, now we can extract the meaning of the uh, this spectrum graph. Here we, we have acceleration sensitive. It means between period less than 0.5 seconds, the changing of accelerations can be detected by the system. Really. That's why we call acceleration sensitive. It is divided by TC period. For velocity sensitive, it is in between TC and TD. Between TC and TD. It means between 0.5 and these three seconds, of course, it will vary, depend on the ground motions, TB, TC and TD. So, small change in velocity, it's easily detected for system with period, within this period. The same is period more than TD. This is because sensitive for displacement. So any change, any change in displacement is easily detected for system have natural period between, not between it, uh, period more than TD. So the TB, TC, TD, in Eurocode, it is based on this concept. So Eurocode collect all available ground motion in Eurocode in Europe area. So they, they access each of 
ground motions and then collect the TB, TC, TD data and then they, they uh, decided uh, uh, which one the, the most occur in the data. So we have the now in Eurocode TB, TC. So as, as shown in this table. But of course, uh, Eurocode not using this uh, notation. Eurocode using S and AG here. But for TB, TC, and TD, the way of uh, defining is the same. So, what more we have by inferring this graph? If we have the period of system less than TB, for period less than TB, it, the response spectra is increased, this one, period less than TB, response spectra must be increased. For spectra in between the period TB and TC, mainly is constant. So we have to sway in your head so that you can see this diagonal axis. So you, you see this, mainly the graph zigzag in between the same value. So that's why uh, approximately we can assume this in between TB and TC, yeah, in between TB and TC, it is a constant value of the acceleration. For response acceleration in between TC and TD, it is decreased, TC and TD. So this one decrease. Do not come benchmarking with this axis, but benchmarking with this axis. So that's why this one is decreased. And also more than TD also decrease. So the shape of this kind of spectra increase sharply, linearly, constant, decrease with the uh, small parabolic, yeah? This is because it is linearly decreased in logarithmic way. It is developed based on this procedure. So, we can say now, is it matched to the elastic design spectra? Using the LSN throw ground motions, the 2.5 in Eurocope, this factor, we can define that in, uh, based on LSN throw ground motions is 2.7. From where this 2.5, it is the average increment factor from PGA of ground motions to maximum spectrum response accelerations. So we have PGA of ground motion as an input, then we calculate the response, we plot the spectra, the maximum spectra uh, divided by this PGA, we will get 2.5. So the 2.5 is average, yeah. Uh, compiling the set of ground motion from various uh, soil type, then we calculate the spectra, then we get this average value is 2.5. Okay, now, we can develop our own spectra, I believe, using uh, our ground motion from Malaysian soil. 
uh, and so we can also draw this shape, yeah, because this is only the linear functions. Uh, either you can calculate analytically by hand, or you can using computer uh, by re simple regression analysis. Also, we can calculate this uh, small parabolic uh, decrement functions using the regression analysis yeah. in Excel also. It's easy. So, now we understand why in your code we have this kind of shape of response spectra. So this is in your code. Yeah. This based on fairy soil type, they get the S value. S is average of soil amplification factor for each soil type. Yeah, as we discussed previously. And TB, TC, TD to divide the acceleration sensitive regions, velocity sensitive regions, and the displacement sensitive regions. This spectra for spectra design type one, or uh, the spectra that uh, generated based on the earthquake with magnitude of surface more than 5.5. Okay. So, if you boring with the theoretical way or uh, handy calculations, so we can calculate him by hand, uh, this one, using Excel is to get this let's say uh, in this modern era why we must calculate by hand we have software that's the most important you download the sismo signal software this is uh, the shortcut way and then uh, you collect all the ground motion that you considered for the side, yeah, the ground motion, you open with this seismo signal. So, in I believe in seismo signal, once you, you open this uh, ground motion one file, is automatically we will get uh, acceleration, velocity time series, and displacement time series. And then you can uh, create, develop, by easily change the damping value, uh, use 5%, and then you will get the response spectrum easily with this software, yeah, with its associate uh, period, uh, commonly or second, unless you buy the uh, the commercial one. This one is free, so for months, of course. But you can uh, ask them for education purpose. They will give you one year, uh, one year, one year, yeah, license to access this software. And then once you get the spectrum response from the ground, considered ground motion. You collect the all the data from zero to four seconds or up to five seconds. Uh, place it in the MS Excel, and then calculate the ratio of response spectrum displacement with the peak ground displacement. Pick ground this one, yeah. and then the ratio of response spectrum velocity with the peak ground velocity, and also this for acceleration. Once you get in Excel this column, 
then you easy to define maximum value of this. Yeah. The maximum value. And then you draw the line. Yeah. You still have to combine it with the graph. Yeah. The graph you print it. Uh, you can use Chopra. In Chopra book, yeah. Draw the line. This is what I mean. Uh, you draw just the line. What you need to draw? You have to decide the maximum value of velocity, maximum value of displacement, and maximum value of acceleration, for example. Yeah, this one is maximum. Using this, you draw the this line. You draw this this line, and then you draw this this. Line. Yeah, you get the intersection. This this intersections is boundary of TD. This intersection is boundary of TC, and this intersection is boundary of TB. As I mentioned previously, for TB, commonly used in between uh, so it is very subjective. Uh, some people use not through this spectra, but they easily define from this graph, normal graph. Then he decide that it start from here. So this is the TB. So that's why I say this is uh, quite subjective. So as a guidance, you, either you can use this, or you can uh, select based on the peak, the first peak value that not uh, close to the straight line. The first one, yeah. And this one, yeah, this one. Uh, so I choose this TB, for example. So in between this value. So once you get this, you can draw this curve. Yeah. So yeah, I already explained it, uh, 0.7. And then draw the line of descent spectra of this from T0, TB, TC, TD, TA. So I'll provide you the example. So let's say we have seismic signal. We, you select the ground motions. You will get the velocity time series, displacement time series, acceleration time series. So you collect the uh, each peak value of the, that series uh, for velo velocity, acceleration and displacement, big value, you collect, and then you uh, convert, or no, you develop the response spectra using 5% damping, for example, or you, you can use uh, 0%, because in commonly, uh, structure available in this earth, uh, from 0 to 10%, they have damping. So 5% is uh, common, value for uh, damping. So in this example, I use uh, zero percent. So based on response spectra available in software, you compare with its peak value of the input, you will get the ratio, this ratio, ratio. Using this ratio, you draw the line, yeah, for ratio of velocity here, yeah, the vertical axis, you draw the line, 
this value for point something it should be here yeah four point something here you draw the line straight line and then for accelerations this diagonal you draw the line perpendicular to the axis uh, 5.5 here yeah, yeah 5.5 straight line and for displacement here yeah, diagonal axis perpendicular you draw the line okay Oops, sorry based on that line the intersections of this this one became a TD boundary. The intersections of this A and V become the TC intersections. For TB, you may choose point one two five or one one eight second here yeah. or you can directly access the ground motion spectra as i mentioned preferably previously so that's a boundary of tv and for te easy it is easy you decide four or five second and yeah, then using that you draw the straight line that one which is here, crossing with the D, you capture the value of accelerations. So, what we trying to collect is to collect the acceleration value. So, this one, collect the acceleration value. This uh, cross-section point, we collect the acceleration value. This clock says point, we collect acceleration value as well as this. So we have this. Once we have this, we can draw the line. So this is your response spectra. Huh? or this is in uh, response spectra acceleration sorry this one is uh, S A T of course, already normalized by its PGA. Yeah. This point is SA divided by PGA. So keep in mind that the spectrum response acceleration at period close to zero is approximately same with the peak ground acceleration of the input motion, the PGA. So that's, you should be keeping in mind. That's why the ratio of spectral acceleration at period uh, close to zero with its PGA of input motions is equal to one. So I think now we're done with the uh, design spectra of ECA. So we can calculate it easily. So if you have, you have data, soil data, you, you can try at home as a homework. If you have time, of course. So do not try this if you, if you don't have time because it will make you headache. But since uh, I already told you that we can develop it with uh, this software, so it's easy for you to uh, develop it. Okay, now 
I think I have to start with the behavior factor. Okay, this is only explain that uh, uh, your your this PGA in in Eurocode is must be uh, uh, determined based on probabilistic seismic hazard analysis. Yeah. Okay, now we move to key factor. Key factor or behavior factor is a factor used for design purposes in order to reduce the force obtained from linear analysis in order to account for nonlinear response of a structure associated with the material structure system and design procedures. In simple manner, I will say that key factor or behavior factor is a factor to bridging the engine to get the nonlinear result using a elastic method. Engineer get the inelastic result. Because engineer like to use simple method. So no one, I believe, if you push them to uh, make a design using the nonlinear inelastic analysis, because it is a uh, expensive way yeah, in analysis. So behavior factor is used. Simply use behavior factor, you will get the uh, result uh, just like the result of nonlinear analysis. So this is uh, uh, an example of behavior factor from Eurocodes uh, divided by two types, DCM and DCH. This is uh, uh, in in in. in in relation with the ductility class, medium and ductility class, uh, high. This is also in relation with the offer strength, yeah, offer strength factor, offer strength. So uh, I will explain later. Okay. Understanding key factor. So we have to understand reducing the elastic response. So we have elastic response here. So I call back the term MCE and DB, MCE and DB here. So MCE, A2475, yes, DB475. Yes, MCE 2% in 50 years. Then this one 10% in 50 years. So, ECA is DB. Okay. So how to relate this DBE and MCE? Actually, the DBE is two thirds of the MCE. Yeah? If you want to relate this, DBE is simply. Yeah? It is taken from the uh, hazard curve. You know, if you're using the hazard curve like this, this is the ground motion. Uh, this is the probability okay, of the hazard. So you will get the value of uh, uh, DBE and MCE. Uh,
yeah, something like that. It's two thirds. Yeah. Two thirds. So we uh, US code using MCE, uh, Euro code using this. So if you want to, uh, let's say you want to using easy easy ache, uh, but in the way of US code, so <laughs> you you can adopt this this value. Okay, now. Uh, let's go back to the behavior factor. This R is similar with uh, Q. Yeah. So if you see this R, it means Q. If you reduce this uh, elastic response to some point, yeah, the reduction factor is the R or Q. This is elastic response. This one we consider as inelastic response. So forget about this MCE. We focus on this DB. Okay. I can skip this. So to understand this, why, why the key is introduced in this elastic response. So we have initially to understand the inelastic behavior in relation with the spectra acceleration. So understanding key factor is it will easy if we understanding first the inelastic behavior. Let's say uh, you induce the ground motions to uh, one system. Let's say SDOF system. Yeah. So you, oh, sorry. Those masses we have K, and then we have a ground motion here. Okay, and then we will get the uh, spawn, uh, say delta. So this is the delta. Okay, more beautiful. So please focus because uh, many students fail in uh, nonlinear elastic analysis because they don't check the result. So the result of in elastic analysis, yeah. If you give appropriate amplitude, yeah, scale it, uh, let's say maxima. I mean, don't use the ground motion with small value, use uh, with big value. Yeah, let's say more than. Uh, 0.5 G, say more than 0.5 G, and then this K do not uh, use the high value, so that we can uh, easily detect the change in the response. So what's the mean change in response? If this is the curve of response of displacement, yeah, this one is T. This is the zero value. Yeah. Uh, this one is positive value. This one is negative value. 
So previously it's oscillated in here, then it shifted to the downward and then oscillated in new baseline. Yeah. This is initial baseline, initial baseline, this one, and then shifted to the baseline. Then we will have permanent, sorry, permanent displacement here. Then this graph will show us that your analysis is successfully work. Yeah. Make sure that you scale the ground motion in maximum way with a high spiral. Say if you don't do not uh, iterate, you do, don't like to iterate in uh, in many numbers. You just use the let's say scale to PGA one G for example, you run nonlinear analysis, make sure that the result of the response shifted. Yeah, or let's say this is for delta, see, this is shifted, yeah, shifted. So the baseline changing. This is initial baseline and then this the after uh, some some time uh, baseline. So why it happened? Because the plastic hinge occurred in some element of the system. If you use the the SDOF, it means in this uh, K it changed to the uh, uh, post yield stiffness. So that's the indication that the inelastic behavior occurred in the analysis. Make sure that happened. So this is another explanation of what the inelastic behavior. So we have the uh, elastoplastic that, that commonly uh, presenting for steel and then this uh, positive post elastic stiffness commonly present for uh, reinforced concrete yeah? and this one, uh, brittle, uh, can be presented for the uh, concrete with, with uh, poor reinforcement, so brittle uh, mechanism. So the, this is an, uh, an explanation also for inelastic behavior. And also, uh, the thing why we have to uh, understand is the inelasticity increases the period when when you have the uh, some element in the building uh, uh, cracked or exceeding the yield point or we call that plastic hinges occur in that element so uh, the weakening of the building occur. So, since the stiffness is reduced, then the period will increase. That's the uh, rule of thumb. Yeah. Increase period, reduce acceleration response. Okay. Increase period, increase the displacement response. So, please keep in mind this. Please keep in mind that the increased period reduce acceleration response. So if you increase the period, you will reduce the acceleration response. If you increase the period, you will increase the displacement response. I give you some couple of seconds to understand it. Yeah, it's easy if I see this. Let's say, may this place. 
could have stiffness. Yeah, stiffness and mass. Yeah, M and K will this. Okay, if period, yeah, if you increase the period, it means the system with low stiffness or high stiffness. If you increase the period, the stiffness should be increased or decreased. We have to use decreased stiffness or lower stiffness so that the period will increase. It means that you have a soft uh, system or a low stiffness system. If you have low stiffness system, then the, oh my God, sorry. If the K is low, then the delta will increase. If you increase the K, then the delta, why? Eh? This is for K increase. This is for K decrease. If you decrease K, you decrease Sorry, if you decrease, no, okay. If you increase the K, you decrease the delta. If you decrease the K, you will increase delta. Because the displacement will increase if we have the soft stiffness system. And if we have a stiff system, then the displacement will be lower. Same with that, the accelerations will reduce. Yeah, acceleration will reduce. Accelerations can relate by the differential of the displacement. If we have a larger displacement, so we will get uh, fewer accelerations. Because to accelerate a large uh, distance, it takes time. Then uh, uh, the certain uh, uh, distance. So I think we can uh, understand this. Yeah. In elasticity, increases period. Since that, it reduces the accelerations and it, it increases the displacement. So, what we we reduce the response. So, elastic response spectrum. <coughs> Sorry. To get inelastic response in terms of reducing the uh, response spectrum, we can divide the elastic and inelastic response in this way. Elastic response spectrum has accelerations corresponding to the elastic response spectrum. And if you design with this elastic response, of course, this is not economical design. So, we have to use inelastic response. 
In elastic response, we have accelerations corresponding to reduced acceleration response spectrum implicitly allows for structural damage. We will discuss about it later. Uh, so why, why it says allows for structural damage. So let's understand in elastic behavior in terms of damping and response. If you add a damping for an elastic response spectrum, so you will decrease the spectrum. So the red uh, both line indicate the lightly dampened response spectrum. After you damp this yeah, with some value of damping, you will reduce. So the, this green both lines is for heavily dampened response spectrum. In elasticity increases damping. Increase damping, reduce response. Please keep in mind. I repeat one more time. In elasticity, increases damping. Increase damping, reduce response. So it means response reduction due to damping permit use of reduced design force. Yeah. Uh, kita boleh menggunakan, uh, mengurangi uh, force yang ada. Nah, boleh kita kurang. Oke, okay. if we reduce response, what will happen with the period? The period will shift it. Yeah, the period will sit. Remember the previous slide, I explained that in elasticity, increase period. Reduce the response, mean in elasticity response, so we'll increase the period. Call effective period at maximum response. So the system that heavily dampened will shift it period. That's why, by using a response reduction factor, or key, we can uh, uh, simulate uh, inherently the uh, inelastic behavior of system. By reducing elastic response spectrum, using the key factor, we can approximate the inelastic response spectrum. Instead of doing the time history response of inelastic oscillators, so we can simply use the key factor. But inside the key factor, containing the, the tactility, the post-elastic stiffness, hysteretic damping, and cyclic degradation. So, this is another explanation in elastic behavior that will be provided by key factor. So, let's say we have uh, this cyclic uh, hysteretic uh, graph for column system response, so this is cyclic. So the area of this, yeah, we call energy. So this energy dissipated yeah, can be representing by the ductility and also by key factor. If I 
draw this line up to here like this the reducing to this py is due to by key factor this py well, this one is p elastic if we are reducing p elastic by using key factor we will get the inelastic system so the area uh, area uh, affected by this inelastic system is energy dissipated ductility can be defined by the delta m and delta y so we have a close relation with this key factor and ductility of course and also the energy dissipations in earthquake engineering the more you uh, can uh, dissipate the energy the, it's better this is another uh, explanation of the key factor and ductility class if elastic force demand decreased by key factor the inelastic deformation demand increase. Yeah, if we increase this, let's say we have this normalized uh, elastic force. Yeah. We normalize this base shear. Yeah, we normalize this. This point one. Yeah, this point one, because we have q equal to 1. If you decrease, if you decrease this, yeah, with this q, then you will increase this displacement beyond the yield line yeah, this one it means you will also increasing the ductility capacity so by using that manner coach use a force reduction factor or behavior factor key factor to represent the degree of ductility that can be tolerated. But of course, this is equal displacement rule. I will explain later. It will not work for all system. This equal displacement rule that using in Eurocode, if you, if we have This kind of elastic force, let's say this one is base shear, this. Yeah. And this uh, displacement at top, uh, on the roof. And this curve is based on uh, push over curve. So, FA can be defined easily by converting the uh, weight with the uh, seismic coefficient, yeah? uh, PGA in masses. Simply, we can define this. But this point, you have to conduct the pushover analysis and also this point. So having this, that we have the force reduction factor or key type, yeah, that the first one, key due to ductility, is if e to fy.
and also this one. And this one. Okay, so it means we reduce the spectra, yeah? If I said spectra, it means the response spectrum acceleration. So this will get base shear or force. Yeah. We reduce response spectra accelerations, means we reduced base shear. Okay. This based on the seismic conditions on your side. But if you design according to this point, it means nothing will happen to the structure. Yeah, you 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 have a unbroken structure. It is not economical. Yeah, it is not economical. You have to allow some limits to your structures, so it become economical, and also you allow to ductility. That's the idea behind the behavior factor. Another. Beside the uh, inelastic response. Okay. Again, how to relate key factor in this ductility class? It is. Okay, so since this one is the valid only for this range according to study, equal displacement rule. Of course, this uh, is using uh, based on elasto plastic as the off. Yeah, uh, equal displacement rule, this one. It means uh, Q ductility. It means if we design with this point, with this F, we design design strength. We will get the displacement. This one. But this one is not actual displacement. This one is not actual displacement. So you have to multiply it with the key D, C, H, so that you will get this. So, actually, you want to capture this point. So this is the actual. Okay? So every time we design the using uh, Eurocode, use this key factor. So don't forget the displacement, the drift that you get have to multiply with the behavior factor so that 
the uh, deformation, the actual deformation uh, can be true. I said that this equal displacement rule can be done within the range of this. But less for 0.65, uh, uh, we have to uh, use the equal energy law. This one equal energy law, uh, we will discuss later. This developed based on the elastoplastic SDOF. But actually, the system is multi-degree of freedom, not single degree of freedom. Uh, many studies have been done now to uh, develop the relationship between the R factor or key factor to the ductility. In Chopra book, we get this that presenting in acceleration, velocity, and displacement in sensitive region. So this curve uh, shows us the relationships between force reduction factor and uh, ductility within the period of Point two to to ten, yeah. This related with the region of sensitive of acceleration, velocity, and displacement. In the uh, right graph, we have the med median value graph uh, of set of ground motion. This is only using uh, the the El Centro. This one is set of ground motion. More or less, look the same. Yeah. So we can say that the value of, let's say, this uh, ductility A is not if equal A if in period. TD, long period. Yeah. I will, I'm trying to say that equal displacement rule is not absolutely uh, right for all conditions. So we have to consider uh, another way to capture uh, the different system. Uh, uh, different element that we use for building. So, if we smoothed the curve, we can see this. For ductility ache here, yeah, applicable in this. But between the 0.25 to 0.65, it's decreased like this. It means the equal displacement rule is not working here. And then work again, and then not work for a short period of system. So, be careful in using of the key factor. But since that uh, available in code, so don't worry, you just use it uh, within the range of the building that is stipulated in that code, of course. So this, this graph 
differentiate the equal displacement rule and equal energy rule. Yeah. This equal displacement, this one is equal energy law, or to present this whole graph is just similar with the equal energy law because we can uh, simplify this whole graph with this uh, strict diagonal line here, that something like that. So we can use these two type of curve. This curve is used in uh, Eurocode A. Uh, that if you reduce the reduce this by key, then you design with this value, this design value, you will get the drift value. So the actual deformation you have to multiply with the key value. So you will get the actual actual D. This for Euro code. In American code and also in our country, in Indonesia, we use this uh, equal energy principle that after you reduce, you cannot multiply by key because we have this notation CD. So once we get the force for design, this one, we will have this, the deformation. Then we have to multiply with CD, yeah, CD to get the actual T. So, to calculate this, just let's say you have a new structure, how to calculate this? So this is easy, you just uh, develop uh, the nonlinear element. Then you conduct uh, in elastic nonlinear analysis. Uh, maybe using pushover analysis or non-linear time history analysis, either way, you can find it. So, see, based on elastic spectra, uh, define the fee for elastic spectra, yeah? based on this defined VE, simply using elastic spectra. Yeah, using elastic spectra, your, 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 your S over AG. You get the S yeah, for T, get the S, then you get, find the fee. Yeah, you get the fee. Define so this is the VE. Once you get VE, the result of this, the result of uh, where I can put this, okay, for so the key is the result of. So result this VD, you get this VD from uh, the step number two.
Because in step number two, you will define this curve through pushover analysis. Yeah, step number two, you will capture this value, you will capture this value, you will capture this value. Some, some uh, studies using these two, both POA, pushover, and nonlinear time history analysis. Pushover for yield point, nonlinear to get maximum value. So, through POA, you will get which element first uh, plastic hinge. Because that's the point. Yeah? This point, uh, uh, the first element having plastic hinge, it can be easily captured using pushover analysis. Then you have to uh, uh, what we call the simplify the curve using B linear. So to get the yield point, this one is the yield point. Okay, yield point, and then the maximum. Based on this, you can compare the base shear that creates the first plastic hinge of the system. You can compare with the elastic base shear. Elastic base shear. And then, based on that compare, you will have the key. That the way if you're trying to evaluate the uh, key factor calculating by your own. So the main problem is the develop the uh, this one. The yeah, this is the main problem, especially for undergrad student. Uh, but many program now provide uh, a simple tools. Just click uh, two three clicking that you will you will provide the uh, nonlinear system okay i think i i i, I reached my final uh, slide oh no i have a two or three this is how to calculate i think i already explained this uh, this is the elastic response this is uh, uh, the design. Uh, okay, this is, we use the pushover. How to is yeah pushover? Then you see pushover. This the first uh, hinges, plastic hinges. Uh, will capture. And then you place this uh, the base shear uh, for this base shear. And then we is easily we compare it. Uh, to get the key factor. Okay, I think I have to end this presentation. Sorry if uh, my English is not uh, appropriately given to you. Thank you for watching me. I give back to uh, Dr. Zulham. Maybe we can enter the Q&A session now. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Adi Faisal, for very long lectures, <laughs> about more than two hours. Okay, yeah. thank you, thank you very much. Okay, so uh, participant, uh, please fill up the uh, attendance form in the chat. So there is a link for attendance, so please fill up. Thank you. Okay, so if you, so now I open for any questions and answer sessions. If anyone have any questions, so you can ask. Uh, Dr. Adi Faisal, you can speak directly or you can uh, type in the chat. That information. Okay, uh, Dr. Adi, mungkin saya ada soalan. I have one question. Yeah, yeah. Sila, sila. sila. Uh, yang yang doktor tadi tunjuk the, the table that you show uh, that uh, calculate the value for 
to determine the uh, apa nak dapatkan dia punya apa namanya itu response spectrum to yeah. obtain response spectrum so that in the table the uh, one uh, the uh, red box for the from the calculation and then and the uh, blue box is the theoretical so yang Dr. Adi show adalah yang calculation kan so yeah. yang the, the theoretical tu dapat daripada mana where you get from uh, ok yang mana ni slide yang mana sekejap ya ya ah yang tadi tadi ini ya ah di sana ini ya 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 ok Uh, kalau kita buka di Chopra book hmm. ya, ini ini ada uh, satu cases yang bentuknya seperti ini ya. nah, ini namanya the half cycle sign pulse force half cycle sign pulse force e, dia ada uh, equations uh, strike forward equations uh, to calculate the response it, mm -hmm. analytically it means it, 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 that exact solutions so mm -hmm. I forgot in uh, Chopra book in what chapter I think uh, for pulse pulse box uh, pulse linear ram pulse box you, you, you can get it in uh, chapter uh, Chopra book Chopra. so uh, I keep using this value if I want to develop my own calculation using this new mock method because this one is based on analytical solutions so let me check I have a Chopra book One hundred forty-three Chopra book second edition. Okay, Chopra book second second edition. Second edition. Page one four three. This one. Half science here. So we can uh, solve that. Yeah. And theoretically, the result is this. Okay, Dr. Zulham. So, okay. using that problem, we we test the new mark method. So this is the result. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, numerically, in, it is approximately yeah because this you see this is dash land. This is the approximate. Uh, of the result of this spice wire linear interpolation method. Okay, okay. Okay. Once we get this, it means our calculation is true already. So replace the PI with the ground motions. Mm -hmm. uh, we use the constant mass value, like one. So we, we just place the ground motion here. Okay, so uh, you, Dr. Zulham can can use this as a uh, workout for the student, master student maybe, not undergraduate student, uh, uh, to create their own uh, response spectra and then compare with the software like Sysmo Signal or whatever. Mm -hmm. so, I hope I can answer your question, Dr. Zulham. Yeah. So, so how close between the the one in uh, red red box and and uh, the blue box? How close that we can accept? So, an acceptable value. Uh, oh, oh yeah, that's uh, that's a good question. The any percentage or whatever? Yeah, yeah, as you can see, it is very close, right? 
Yeah. It's very close. Uh, uh, to make sure that your your work is uh, uh, accurate enough, I already mentioned this that you have to use that uh, the ratio. Do do, do, do not do not uh, uh, violate this uh, rule. The time step and the period. Mm -hmm. Less than point five five one. Okay. okay. Uh, the 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 smaller you use the time spread, it's better. But mm -hmm. smaller mean you increase the number of calculations. Yeah. The increase you increase number of iterations, uh, and then you will need a longer time. Okay. 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 So it based on time step lah, number of time step. Yeah, time step. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Doctor Adi. Okay, so, if any other question from participants. Uh, Dr. Jula, mostly student uh, attended this course is uh, undergraduate or, or we, we have master or uh, no? Uh, ada. ada uh, ad, yang daripada Unimap ada daripada master ada daripada undergraduate ada. But oh, okay. uh, tak ramai. Uh, tapi saya faham, uh, saya difahamkan ramai daripada universiti luar ada daripada UPM, daripada Unimas. Oh really? Uh, so that's why the numbers are about uh, 80 participants. Kalau daripada ini mat saya sudah dalam tak sampai 20. Yeah. yeah. My colleague dekat uh, Medan pun ada ikut ni. Beberapa. Uh, okay. uh, Dr. Sina, uh, it is my pleasure. Dr. Sina ada, Dr. Azida ada. Yeah. Uh, eh, banyak pesan ikut. Thank you. Saya tak tak bincang pasal uh, PGA dapat dari mana yang probability seismic hazard sebab Dr. Sina sudah explain uh, tak, kalau tak silap uh, dua bulan, satu bulan lalu eh. Assalamualaikum Dr. Adi. Eh, kau salam Dr. Sina. Dr. Zulham, ya apa khabar? Alhamdulillah baik. Nice to see your lecture Dr. Adi dah lama rasanya kita join. I think sangat-sangat uh, informatif dan sangat uh, uh, detail lah explanation tu. Oh, saya, saya uh, takut yang itu tak boleh masuk. Tapi at least okay, uh, saya, uh, saya, uh, saya secara daripada yang di present uh, um, detail tu saya, saya boleh angkap lah untuk beberapa untuk structure dynamic analysis lah. Uh, uh, especially on the apa tu hazard surface application. Yeah. Uh, I think this is the extended for the building purposes. So I think it does a very good lecture. Lah. Yeah, thank Not you. Thank you, Dr. Sina. So we need, need more time to absorb, actually. My <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Dr. Zulam, you already recorded the, the uh, course, yeah, yeah. this course, right? So I can. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's good for Dr. Sina to extend your works because if you have uh, uh, many recorded. Uh, ground motion now you can create your own shape spectra yeah differ with the mm -hmm. uh, euro code yeah masih masih dalam proses untuk itulah to get the uh, sebenarnya dari master master degree pun saya ada belajar juga how to match the response spectra and, and so yeah. on but we can i think we can kind of work together lah with i think dr d mm. and dr irwan mm. and dr suhab regarding this lah in the future Hopefully we can make it to have a team lah to that team kan? Insya Allah. Insya Allah. Insya Allah. Insya Allah. Nah, Dr. Irwan pun ada ni kat sini. Ya. Yeah. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Pak Irwan. Yeah, Kira-kira Pak... Korea Korean. Korean. Dr. Yeah. from Korean. <laughs> so apa khabar Dr. Irwan? Ya. Yeah, sehat. Sehat. Alhamdulillah. Sila bila ada yang... Salah dulu email. 
Eh, dah boleh ni eh. Attendant dah boleh kan, Iwan? Macam mana? Attendant tu dah boleh, dah boleh. Dah, dah, dah. boleh. Saya, saya sengaja memang nak, nak bincang pasal ni sebab dia memang prinsipal sangat kan. Prinsipal sangat ni supaya kita memang boleh membuat research uh, based on our data. Uh, instead of we are using uh, pihak lain data kan. Se sebab undangan yang diberikan Dr. Zurham memang the starting point for uh, uh, initiating the collaboration in research between UNIMAP and OMSO. So, jadi ini macam uh, brainstorming saja untuk mengingatkan kembali, I believe doktor-doktor uh, uh, dekat sana sudah mempelajari ini sebab Chopra book uh, available in everywhere. Uh, by remem uh, remembering this again, kita boleh buat banyak banyak benda. Of course, it is depend on data. So let's say we, we in Malaysia have a new ground motion data, so we have create our own uh, period. Yeah, T T B T C T D T E, as I mentioned previously. And also, if we have a new new type of structures, for example, we can evaluate the the behavior factor for that uh, type of new type of structure as well. So that's the idea. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, maybe ada ada soalan lagi silakan sebelum waktunya habis nanti. Yeah. Yeah. Tadi one question please. Yes, yeah, sila. Okay, um, saya nak 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 refresh balik lah ya sebab waktu kita lupa dah lama tak buat uh, non linear time stress analysis. Yeah. Okay, contohnya kalau kita untuk untuk sebelum kita masukkan input of ground motions, yeah. kita select 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 ground motions. Yeah. Okay, and then kita, we we scale, kita kita scale up or scale down kan? Yeah. Okay, which response spectrum we have to re, uh, refer nak dapatkan value untuk kita scale up or scale down tu? Okay. Okay, good questions. First, you have to decide uh, your sites is within what region. Like, let's say uh, uh, you, you want to conduct for Malaysia. Of course, you have to refer the uh, seismic code that uh, uh, works for Malaysia. The National Annex? Uh, National Annex. Mm -hmm. So it means you have to see the counter, counter seismic zone yeah, for Malaysia, for PGA of course. And then you develop your own uh, spectra design using Eurocode. Okay, based on the equation from Eurocode, you can? Yeah. yeah. Okay, must, uh, elastic design elastic kan eh? okey That, that's a good question okay. <laughs> untuk that's untuk evaluation of, 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 of structure performance contoh yeah. contoh dengan romo romo ko atau set 2000 okey because by the end of the day we are going to to get the displacement for every story right yeah okey uh, that's so macam mana kita nak masuk nak masuk kan tu saya pun dah dah 5 tahun tinggal benda ni okey let's see let me Uh, saya buat di paling akhir. Okay. Uh, misalkan, misalkan uh, uh, Dr. Iwan ada kat Malaysia. So yes. you have, you have the, the, you get this AG. And okay. then you will develop. Uh, develop this your spectra so you get the s after you meet, multiply the with the ag mm -hmm. okay uh make sure this don't uh not disturb yet by key yeah not disturb yet okay uh key the, you using just elastic spectra elastic spectra okay okay uh, just elastic spectra means this dbe I mean, evaluation in designs, it's a look-alike, but actually it's not. When you design, you're using key. 
Okay, yeah. okay. When you Is design it? using key, you reduce the spectra. Yeah, you reduce the spectra. So this one become uh, SD, design spectra, due to key. But for evaluation, you have to use this one. Elastic spectra, without key, without important factor, just purely spectra of acceleration. So you, you have important factor also, right? It do. Mm -hmm. uh, so do, do not use this also. Just purely the elastic spectra for evaluation. Then you scale the the ground motion. Whether you using the uh, scale based on the period, yeah. For example, mm -hmm. yeah. You 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 scaling this uh, based on as uh, in the end, or using spectra matching. Mm -hmm. Okay, matching. Either way, can be. But keep in mind, when you're using spectral matching, you will lose the information of the poles, forward directivity, fling. It will uh, demolish. Some, 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 some case uh, still remain there. But for make sure that the poles content, uh, fling content available in that ground motion, better you use this method. Scaling at the period that we consider, mm -hmm. not the spectral matching. Okay, okay. So I hope that so, can answer okay, your so, question. So, so we can get we can get the the factor either either to scale up or scale down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. It, it depends on your ground motion. If yeah. your ground motion is higher than the spectra. Mm -hmm. uh, elastic spectra, so you have to uh, decrease, scale down, uh, mm -hmm. scale down, of course. Yeah, yeah. Okay, can we use seismic signal to for that purpose? Oh, sure, sure, sure. Okay. sure. Okay. sure. So, since that download today for tri for trial version, they give thirty days. Ah, you you request uh, formally using your email, mm -hmm. official email. They will give you one year. Okay, okay, for free. For free. Okay, okay. Uh, of course, okay. for for student also using the official, uh, they will give. Okay, so 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 we can just uh, save the new one, ah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, 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 yeah, you can use the feature inside okay. that software. So we can we we, can, uh, we have to scale up or scale down, and then we save as, and then the the newly save as file you uh, we use it as as the input to our Romoco or two thousand. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And then, another, and then, another problem will arise because the format of the seismo signal is uh, the period and uh, the time and the accelerations. So you have to change in uh, Ruamoko the format for that ground motion input. And and okay, Kita dapat di this placement too, so we don't have to multiply what we skew lagi kan? No need, no need. Okay. Uh, that's, that's, the actual, that's the actual displacement. Actual, yeah. <laughs> okay, macam tadi, okay, sebelum tadi yang you cakap ni, we don't need to multiply with the importance factor. Yeah. Untuk untuk dekat elastic ni. Yeah, because you are evaluation, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, evaluation, so we just uh, use the alpha, alpha GR from the map. Yeah. And then multiply with, with S uh, proposed for every soil type. Yeah. Okay, okay. In Uruku, I mentioned this is uh, equation 3.2 to 3.5 for elastic. Yeah, yeah, I don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm referring here about alpha G, okay, okay. So, Tadi, can, can I can I uh, share my screen to double confirm? Okay, wait. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry to use time. How uh, to... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you have to ask Zulham maybe as a host. <laughs> can, can, no problem. Oh, oh, okay.
point I still okay. Okay, can you see there is this a yeah. uh, code? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this one is for the how to develop the horizontal elastic response spectrum. Yeah. Okay, for corresponding uh, TB, TC, and TD, and so on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, mention here that the alpha G. Alpha G here is the uh, importance factor multiplied by the alpha G R. Alpha G R is from the map. So mm. you. We we have to consider the the alpha uh, the important factor or not? What, what what that means is that alpha what this one? This is yeah uh, the this one uh, the, the the alpha g to the alpha g yang masuk nak masukkan the equation ni. Hmm. Kalau dalam euro code ni saya yang saya faham yang saya nampak di kedai we have to multiply dengan important factor ni. Important factor ini. Uh, untuk dia dia factor lah patutnya tak perlu patut tak perlu kan sebab tak kita perlu. mesti guna actual actual yeah. kan ya yeah, actual actual ah okey okey so value yeah, this important kan bangunan sama <laughs> sebab kalau kalau bang hmm? important factor depend on the uh, the function of the building betul, right betul. Hmm. okay okay so kalau bangunan tu sama let's say four, four story of hospital dengan four story of school dia dah, dah tak sama dia punya value of important factor Ya. Yeah. Kan, tak, tak, tak boleh. Membesar dia lagi dia punya respon tu. Tak boleh. Pure, okay. Purely, purely uh, reflecting the seismic condition of your site. Ya, yeah, betul, betul. betul. Oh, okay. okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for your information. So, okay, what, uh, what, Dr. Irwan, the, mm -hmm. but keep in mind also, we have a two type of the uh, ground motion currently DBE and MCE. Mm -hmm. As I uh, mentioned previously, if you want to evaluate based on DBE, so you're using that Eurocode uh, spectra. But okay. if you want to consider the maximum considered earthquake for uh, 2475 uh, return period of earthquake, you multiply that DBE with the 1.5. Okay, okay, multiply one point five. Okay, betul. So you you, you get the MCE. Okay, okay. Uh, some 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 cases some cases they ask you, let's say you dealing with reviewer, they ask you, uh, DB is too too small. Now we consider MCE two thousand okay. So you just multiply the spectra with one point five, mm. and you scale scale with that uh, MCE spectra. MCE is for two two percent of probability yeah. of accidents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the DBE of of ten uh, percent. Yeah, yeah, okay. correct. Okay, that's all from me. Okay, thank you, Doctor. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Doctor Irwan. <laughs> okay, any other question from participants? Okay, so kalau if there is no question, maybe we can end our webinar. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we end our webinar with uh, Tasbih Kafarah dan Surah Wal-As.